Welcome to Uncivilized Unplugged. All right, gang, let's, uh, let's start as we always do. For those of you at home, this is a live recorded podcast in the Elite Recording Studio in Golden, Colorado. And we start every one of these sessions with a meditation. So if you are not driving or operating heavy machinery, please put your feet flat on the floor, close your eyes, and let's take a deep breath or two together. And just begin to drop into your body <clears throat> and let the day drop away. Let go of any stress that you've been carrying, any story that's been popping up in your world. And just be with yourself and be in your body for just a few minutes. And if you would take your hand and place it just an inch or two below your belly button. And for a moment, just feel how much power you have sitting there in your center. <clears throat> how much truth you find there your ability to change the world, to change your world. Your ability to actualize what you wanna do while you're here, to bring your gifts, your dreams to life. your ability to create and hold strong boundaries and to live with integrity. Take your other hand and place it on your heart. And feel the different sensation here. Feel the place that love lives and love emanates from. Where the divinity in you lies, the divine. And now feel the connection between the two. The primal in your stomach, that strong, vivacious energy. The love in your heart. And feel how these two want to be together. They desire to live together, they desire to co-create, to collaborate, to be in partnership with each other. Feel the natural ease between the two, that they know when, when it's time to use one and time to use the other, and when it's time for them both to come together equally. Feel how much access you have to this relationship in your body every single moment of every single day. Just one breath away. The primal and the divine, yin and yang, masculine and feminine, dark and light, go and flow, whatever we want to call it. And feel for just a moment how the sum of these two parts is vastly greater than just adding them together. Here, one plus one does not equal two. There's an infinite amount of source that gets released when they are in partnership. Fold your hands back in your lap. Take a couple more deep breaths on your own. Begin to come back into your body if you left, back into the room if you left. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And then at your own pace and at your own time, you can blink your eyes open.
All right, gang. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So for those of you who are listening at home uh, and listening to the recorded version of this, not the live version, I'm just going to make one small recommendation and let's just get this out in the open. This is not going to be a child appropriate conversation. So if you're in the car with a couple of kids, please don't listen to this. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, I remember uh, anybody who's over 40 will have, and especially guys will have this uh, same experience. There was this one VHS tape in my high school. It had a crappy label on it, and it was called Birds of North America. And that was not what the subject matter of this VHS tape was. And there was, <laughs> it was the one porn in my high school that went around on like a rotating schedule, right? It was like when it was your week, it was just nothing but furious masturbation. And then when it wasn't your week, you were back to normal or back to your own imagination. For a lot of us, this was, and I know it was for me, just to be quite openly, this was my first like classroom of what is sex? How do I do it? What are the expectations? What am I supposed to do? All brought to me by Ron Jeremy and Peter North. And let's just say this was the 90s. This was like porn had a plot. There may actually be like 60 seconds of conversation. Uh, there was almost, or maybe there was like, Jamie, I don't know if you remember porn back then, but there was like almost female pleasure involved, right? Unlike today, where one, it's not just one porn floating around your high school, you can actually watch it on your watch or any single electronic device in your home. And the trajectory, it seems, has become so much more violent, heartless, and disconnected. And so why are we talking, why am I opening with a story about pornography? Because tonight we're really talking about sex education. We're talking about to and with a sex educator. And what is the trajectory and why are we having conversations in 2019 about sex? But we'll get to that in a minute. So for those of you listening at home, uh, my name is Trevor Bohm. I'm the founder of the Uncivilized Men's Movement, the Man Uncivilized Masculinity Course and the Uncivilized Nation. My personal mission is to change the way one million revolutionary men express the newly emerging paradigm of masculinity. I fucking love saying that. The uncivilized paradigm that encompasses both the primal and the divine. That we're celebrating what is still amazing about traditional masculinity and infusing a massive and ever so necessary dose of consciousness. This is not pretending we're all medieval Vikings running around like Thor, nor naked, making uh, drum circles in the woods naked and rubbing period blood all over our faces or whatever the kids on Instagram are doing these days. Wait, it's, what? It's, oh. Trust me, it's a thing, Jamie. It's a no, thing. I, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, like, I, yeah. I mean, I do that. But. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> Us guys aren't doing that. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not, yeah, you're, you're free for all. Yeah, or on your balcony. This is about teaching men how to fight, feed, fuck, and feel. How to have access to our heads, our hearts, and our balls. For more information on the program and what I'm doing, go to www.manuncivilized.com. You can find me on Instagram, at Traver Bohm. And because this thing is now a podcast, please go to iTunes and find it, Uncivilized Unplugged. And if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoy tonight, give us a good rating. Someone out there gave me my first one-star rating. Um, I hope that they step in dog poop with bare feet. And moving on. So what is Uncivilized Unplugged and what are we doing? The frame of tonight is just two gorgeous people hanging out in the living room, having a very open dialogue, talking about things that people aren't talking about in society, and shedding light on stuff that I personally believe needs to be uh, whatever the, like, shed it upon. And tonight we have one of my absolute favorite humans. I was telling um, our guest tonight that before these calls, I often get super nervous. But when she's on, I just get super excited and, like, hyped up, and I can't wait to do this. But uh, this is a woman who I think every time, what did we say last time we had dinner together? Like, this is the first time we haven't cried. <laughs> <laughs> We've laughed together, we've cried together, we've taught workshops together. I have quotes of hers in my book. I have quotes of hers uh, swimming around my head most of the day. I draw a ton of personal inspiration from this woman. 
uh, with your fear, her fearlessness and the way she lives and ex expresses herself. So please, everywhere, all around the world, put your hands together for Jamie Thompson. Ah! Hi, Jamie. Hi, Traver. It's so good to have you back on, of course. For people who don't know you, can you give us like the quick and dirty of who you are, what you do, and one thing that people may not know about you? Yes. Please. So who I am is I am a sex and intimacy coach, and I um, specifically am interested in waking up like humanity waking up through bringing consciousness to our sex life mm. and um, harnessing the power that is in orgasm and turn on and pleasure and turning that into a new baseline for the way that we operate. I believe that if more people were having earth-shattering, life-changing, transcendent, fulfilling orgasms, that our planet would be in a much better condition. So <laughs> that <laughs> is a, a part of, and I, I kind of say that jokingly and also, but really, there's, um, there's, there's a deficit of true connection and intimacy mm -hmm. in, in sex. And, mm -hmm. and there's a deficit of, 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 <clears throat> sex altogether and, and definitely amazing sex. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just a big part of what is important to me. I believe that we can wake up through having an amazing intimate life. And that's what my mission is right now. Oh, it's so beautiful and so necessary, huh? You know, you and I have talked at, at length about, I really don't care if people rub their genitals together more often what I really care about is what's behind the scenes yeah. and what are the convert, what needs to happen, especially with men, but I know with, with uh, everybody of what do we need to do to bring the ability to have great sex to the table? Right. And I think that's a, a and you're right. Planetary, right? I posted something today about um, the situation in Japan and with one in four Japanese people at the age of 30 still having not had sex, and to me, that's heartbreaking. And again, not because people aren't fucking, it's because that means people aren't talking. That means people most likely aren't going to lunch, having coffee, holding hands, sharing, sharing stories with each other, sharing, as you said, the big, scary I word, right. intimacy. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like what you're doing is great for people, great for the planet, great for animals, great for clean air, like great for making money, so if I owned Instagram, I would really want you on my platform. You're like Mother Teresa, but like a lot hotter and using dirty words. So could you perhaps, something happened to you recently. Would you mind telling everybody about that? Yeah, yeah. So what's interesting, um, I'm, I'm really interested in, in people being empowered through mm their experience of their own body and, and mm -hmm. having their, you know, their life force be activated in such a way that they have more ability and bandwidth to create within their life. Mm. And, um, and, and I was thinking about this, you know, like why, why would, why would my Instagram get shut down? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, it, the, the mission is clear. Right. Um, and I came back to this idea of, of power. Mm -hmm. And that um, I don't think it's actually Instagram who shut me down. I think it's a group of people who got together, you know, over, over some, some tea one night or something and started flagging me. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I don't think it's actually Instagram. Yeah. And I think that the reason why it got shut down is it's threatening that, um, that people who are empowered are threatening mm -hmm. because those who currently have power over people and they have power mm. because other people don't are frightened of mm. people who are speaking openly about the greatest power source that exists on this planet, which is our sexual energy. Mm. It's literally concentrated life force. So it's terrifying for certain groups of people who yeah. have a certain kind of power under a certain kind of control to consider that 
we might be the ones that actually have the power. And I think through our sexuality is part of how we actually take our power back. Mm. You know, Carolyn Mace, I remember hearing this 20 years ago, said, if you want to control a population, control their sex. Yes. If you want to control a person, control their sex. And yeah, so you are liberating people through sexuality, which is why we talked. I was like, why did you get shut down? And yet there is amateur and or not amateur, but there's soft core porn. There's like, there's a jokingly said, there's an entire Instagram page of women performing oral sex on bananas. And yeah. to whoever shut you down, that wasn't threatening, yeah. which is disgusting. Yet I read your posts and they are empowering. They are like, fuck yeah, we can get, we can do this. How do you think that, what do you think we need to do as a, as a, as the humans, as the society of not, of, of not perhaps attacking the power, but of what do we do to empower ourselves knowing that there's, there's a force out there that doesn't want us to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, it, it's interesting because you could go, we could go stand in the street and hold mm-hmm. signs that say "Give us back our power" or something. Mm-hmm. Right? But like that, that that doesn't actually actually work. I believe mm-hmm. that um, that power, that actual like our true power, is something that can never be taken away, mm-hmm. and that it's rather something that we reclaim for ourselves. But it's not like when you reclaim it, it's not like you get it back from someone. You actually just start embodying it, which is one of the things that I love about the work that you do as well is it's, Mm. it's, it's about embodiment. It's about remembering who we are and that we don't have to listen to what anyone else says. So why fight them? Because we're just giving them a lot of energy and power. Mm. Otherwise, you know, why, why not just find it on our own and, and come back into our, our body and Mm -hmm. our, um, our sexuality. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like in sexuality is one of the greatest places where there is power that can be harnessed Mm -hmm. that we are just not educated about. Yeah. What did you say last time about the bedroom? The bedroom is what? Um, I believe that the bedroom is the greatest personal development tool that no one ever taught us how to use. That's right. Yeah, like ladies and gentlemen, it actually, we got kicked off Instagram for saying shit like that. Right. So yeah, self-realization, like really, mm-hmm. really finding out who we are and really having the courage to be vulnerable about mm-hmm. um about what we want and mm-hmm. and our desires and to feel our own, like to actually feel your own power and presence in your body. I was just working with a, a client today that you know, it's like she lives in her head Mm. and actually going into her body. She was like, I have so much more energy when I connect to my center, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I connect to my pussy, Mm -hmm. you know, when I actually start like feeling into like my pleasure and exploring myself and, and it's so like, how is that taboo? How is it? How is this conversation even taboo to, to explore ourselves? Um, you know, I mean, that's like, the, 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 the beginning of it. And I know, I mean, I grew up, I grew up in a, in a Christian home. So, so everything was taboo. Right, right, right. Do you think that we, and I I remember I wanted to ask you this question, but I know it's huge and it's like, oh fuck, I can't do that to her, but I'll ask anyway. When the question was like, what's going on with sex here in America? And really the question is, is it the people? Is it like, is it us? Are we not ready? Or is it the messages that we're getting that's telling us we're not ready? Or, or are, you know, is it the power that be, are they so powerful that we're, they're not allowing us to do this? Or are we holding ourselves back? here? I mean, there's always, it's like, it's like, where do we point the finger? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, I always say, let's start with pointing the finger at the one that can change it. And that's right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Fair enough. I mean, like, you know, it's like at, at, you know, with self, you know, like how can I, because the powers that be can be doing whatever they are. And fortunately we live in a world where we can choose. Right. And, and not, not every, are we live in a country? I'm going to say we live in a country. Yeah. Let's, yeah. I mean, I was, everyone in the world can't. Right. So it's like really being grateful for, 
Um, I mean, talk about, you know, using privilege. Mm -hmm. We all have the privilege of being able to explore our own body. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to this right now, then you have the understanding and the idea that that could even be something that's possible. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's an inside out approach. Right. That no and matter of course, what the answer. campaigning and all that. I mean, I, you know, it's like, why, why, why do we post about this stuff publicly? Because we, we want to, we want to ultimately impact the way that the system also right. works. But like, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting when it's like, but what about that, you know, that conversation that you just had with your partner, hmm. you know, like it, it's like, rather than focus on impacting the whole system, like what about being honest? Wow. With your partner. What about being vulnerable? Yeah. What about sharing something? Yeah. You know, I shared something with my partner that was really, really challenging mm. the other day. And it was just like, in doing that, I experienced so much more um, freedom. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just okay to have, des- you know, desires and, and, and to, to get hurt and to, mm. you know, feel vulnerable and, and be open about it. I think that's how we impact the whole thing. So that's your form of activism. Yeah. It starts with honesty and the and with the person sitting across from you. That is an act of activism. That's that's really well said. Yeah, yeah, I think that's far more impactful than making Facebook posts and then going and sitting on opposite ends of the couch and not talking, which it seems to be an epidemic, uh, at least in Japan. But I'm going to extrapolate over and say that it's also an epidemic here. Yeah. That we are far more outward than, than inward. On that note, because I, I know the answer to some of these questions, but I would love for you to help everybody listening. And I'm going to pick on dudes here and pick on men because I remember reading in that. Did you read the Atlantic article I think I sent you on the state of sex in the U.S.? Mm-hmm. And it was talking to so many women <clears throat> saying, well, why did you just agree? Why did you just throw your hands in the air and say, uh, I'm done having sex, period. And so many of the replies are the same replies that I've gotten in person from talking to women. They say, because I just got sick of having bad sex with men. So I fucking gave up. And I went, okay, well, define bad sex. And it wasn't like, I didn't have 17 orgasms. I didn't see Shakti or whatever. I didn't levitate. It was like, oh, what you just described sounds horrible. I'm so sorry. That was your sexual experience with an adult not someone who's just 14 and trying to figure this shit out and maybe didn't know where to like touch and push and yada, yada. So can you outline, and this is maybe take a deep breath first, what is shitty sex? What is good sex? And then what is Jamie Thompson sex? Or <laughs> my, like the, the level of sex that, that you're advocating for. <laughs> and go. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay. So, um, I think that bad sex is more about performance than it is pleasure. Mm. So unfortunately, teenage girls and boys are taught to perform. Mm. They, you are taught. Remember in <clears throat> high school, there's even this, this kind of phrase of like being good in bed and like everyone's trying to figure out like, oh yeah, you're supposed to be good in bed. And then you're in your 20s and you're like, drunk at a bar and you're like, oh yeah, how do I be good in bed? Like, I just Mm want to be, it's like, there's an idea of where sex is actually about performance and validation. Mm. And there is no pleasure in performance and validation. That's actually not what people really desire on the inside. So I think that because of this, the way that many people grew up and, and the programming many people have of you know, that it's supposed to be about, um, about your performance that a lot of people, I mean, me included, didn't grow up with this idea or with, with a real deep embodied understanding of what I really want. Mm. You know, we don't grow up with that because we're so focused on being good. And this goes both ways. This goes for men and women, both Mm -hmm. that I've worked with. I've seen this similar, uh, pitfall. Mm-hmm. Of, of wanting to be good, but not really knowing what we really want. So bad sex ends up where nobody is really enjoying themselves. Women are faking orgasms. Mm. I mean, I remember the moment where 
I faked my last orgasm. I chose. Mm-hmm. I, I remember I was, you know, with my boyfriend in bed and I rolled over and I was like, I'm not, I, I can't do this anymore. Like I have to actually figure out what I like and go through that really uncomfortable conversation of helping him understand that. Mm. Um, and, and it was, it was, it, it was, it was kind of a disaster. I mean, I was in my early twenties and I was mm-hmm. trying to explain something to someone that was like, what? You haven't been fully enjoying this. And I'm like, I actually haven't. Mm. And that's on me because I was ultimately not being fully truthful because I had this idea of what sex should be, but I had never really connected to what, what my truth was and, and what my, what really turned me on. So it, it's like, I know so many women that it's like, if you actually just tune in right now, when is the last time you faked an orgasm? Like for real. Or, or exaggerated your pleasure to make it seem like it was something more than it was because it seems like that's what it's supposed to be because you're comparing yourself to Hollywood or porn or mm. you know romance novels or just trying to be good and it's about validation. Mm. Beautifully stated. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, I'd be really curious what would happen in the U.S. if people had a policy of I just don't have bad sex with the same person twice. Maybe the numbers would go like way up or maybe like the converse conversating would go way up or maybe it would just be a national like shit storm disaster. I think a lot of guys feelings would get, there'd be some bruised egos on Monday morning around the water cooler and maybe a few less high fives of like, bro, it's fucking God this weekend. They're like, bro, um, I got this new book. <laughs> she comes second or whatever. She comes first or whatever the book is. Comes she comes at all. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> comes at all. She comes right. for real. <laughs> comes <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, and, and I think part of the, another piece of it, and, you know, I mean, you, you speak on the men's side a lot and I, I, you know, tend to speak on putting some responsibility and taking some responsibility Mm -hmm. as women is, um, I, I have noticed that there's a, um, a paradigm of thinking that men should just know Mm. and then hating them because they don't. And, um, you know, I, I remember I've heard these words come out (laughs) of my mouth. I've heard them come out of the mouth of my client and it's like, well, I don't want to train. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to, and I totally we change get the that because we train dogs, right? But we teach <laughs> each other. I don't yeah. want to educate. I don't want to share. You know, but but that's but that's how it that's how it comes out is mm-hmm. like that that women um, aren't wanting to. They don't want. It feels like training. They mm-hmm. they don't want to train someone, and 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 probably there's a better way of saying it, but that's the way that it comes out. And the truth is that, that women don't want to be vulnerable and share like, Hey, this is actually what I want. Mm. And many times we haven't done, done our own research on ourselves as well to really feel into Mm -hmm. what, what our truth is. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't actually taken the time to look at like, okay, like what, like, have you ever actually for the women out there looked at a map, look at a map of your vagina, like what's happening in there? Where are the spots? How, how does it work? Have you ever actually like put your hands on yourself and felt like the, the things that you really like so that you can share it with someone. And sometimes it ends up being a session where it's, it's more about talking Um, and, 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 but that ends up, you know, saving you later, you know, don't have bad sex twice. You might have to take one, one or two times to actually explain to someone. Right. And, and, but we don't want to do that because we have this idea that we're supposed to just all be these like, you know, porn stars and it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Birds of North America taught me well. You know, it's funny when you, right before you said (laughs) a map of the vagina, I was like, no, 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 not letting guys off that easy either. Uh, maybe some basic anatomy, which yeah. you can Google quite easily yep. uh, to figure out, hmm, that's where the clit is. Oh, that's where, or even God forbid, have a conversation with your partner since it's hers. 
right? Maybe like, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're, we're, want to show me where yours is? Oh, that's, and then you just go, I knew it was there. That's what I thought the whole time. I was just checking to make sure you did and let your ego come back. But yeah, we have to have some kind of base knowledge, I think, not even of, of like systematic sexuality, but of our partners. Of, hey, how many people, I'll ask the guys, have instead of rolled over, high five themselves and passed out, said, what part of that was the most pleasurable? What would you have loved to have had more of? What could you have perhaps gone without? That it, that's it. That's, that's like a monumental, mind-blowing fucking conversation for a lot of people after sex. Right? And we didn't get into spirituality. We're just like, do you like when I push here? Cool. Do you not like when I push here? Thank you. Hmm. You, you can actually do it on the spot, which is, you know, where it actually ends up being, um, you know, where there's actually education that happens. Mm. It's like, let's actually just take this time and have like a feedback loop, mm. you know, have a real feedback loop. And, mm. and, and once you've got it, like once you know how to drive the car, then you know how to drive the car. You know, so, but it's like learning that. I mean, I've had, I've had a girlfriend too. Like I know what it's like. They're complicated. Vaginas are complicated, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's, each one is different. Mm -hmm. And so learning how hers worked, I was like, oh, it's different than mine. And, and so I had an embodied experience of like, oh, they really are all different. Maybe men like just shouldn't know. And there's some men that just have a great baseline and they know a lot. And often <clears throat> there's tweaks and adjustments. Definitely. And there are men who just need to figure out some basics and some conversational basics and some communicative basics before we go shoving our fingers places. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. So that's bad sex or shitty sex. What's the difference for you? What's the difference in your world between good sex and amazing sex? And what is the bridge between the two? Right. So I think, I mean, with, with, with good sex, it's like, we have to, we have to at least start with pleasure. You know, it's like people are enjoying themselves and they're connected and it's like a mutually enjoyable experience, right? That's good sex. <laughs> I was just thinking like, that's revolutionary for half the country. Yeah, uh, I'm absolutely. With you. Totally it's with good. You. Let's just make it, it was a positive. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Um, and that's, I mean, and that's, it's like both, you know, both people are enjoying themselves and there's like connection present. Mm. Um, say yeah. really quickly, I'm sorry to cut you off. Say a little more about that because I want that point to be hit home that there's connection present. What does the that thing, mean to the listener? Right. The thing that you started off with where you had us connect to our core and our center and our heart. Mm -hmm. So like imagine your heart and your center being both in integrated in your, your sexual experience. So it's like you're, 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 you're not shut down in one or the other. And mm -hmm. oftentimes people are shut down in one or the other. And so they can't even have good sex because mm -hmm. their, um, their, their heart is shut down for me for, for a long time. My, my heart was shut down. And so I was having like, it, it wasn't that, it wasn't that great. Like I would have thought it was good, but it actually wasn't fully integrated. It's like my heart wasn't present mm. in, in my experience. And that, and that is not as, not as enjoyable mm -hmm. um, as being able to be connected and, and fulfilled through the, your entire body. Okay. You know, I'll add, cause I, I do speak to a lot of men that I know a lot of men who have trouble having sex if their heart is present because they have to go through the bridge of, okay, I've shut my heart down in order to perform in order to fuck this person. And Oh, wow. In order to co-create, Oh shit. I have to be willing to be hurt here as well. So for guys listening, know that, know that's a real thing. And that to go from good to great, you're going to have to have your heart involved and it's okay if there's a bridge period in there where you have, let's just call them some performance challenges because holy shit, you're feeling emotions and having anxiety and like, Oh wow, this is a lot more than just friction. Right. That's part of the vulnerability. You know, that's part of when Tiger Woods, you know, completely deconstructed his golf swing and 
was terrible at golf for a while and then he came right. back better than ever. Right. It's like, right. We, we have to do these things where we, we go back to the drawing board sometimes. Mm. Um, and, um, often women have to do that with, um, or get to do that with learning, uh, different kinds of orgasms that are possible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like going back to the, to the drawing board and, and maybe not having it always be about a clitoral orgasm. Mm. You know, maybe you're actually going in and looking for something deeper and you start to have deeper experiences. And so that would be what I would call, you know, great or, or, um, mind blowing sex is mm-hmm. when you're, you're, you're contacting really deep places within each other. And oftentimes for women, this exists in the cervical orgasm or even the G-spot orgasm, you know, Mm -hmm. where there's actually, you know, like a lot of fluid and there's like a, a real, um, a real connection to what I'm going to call a power greater than ourselves, you know, whatever Mm. your experience of universal intelligence or, you know, source energy or nature or God or whatever you want to call it. But like the experience of actually surrendering to the person in front of you such that whatever wants to flow through can flow through. And it's, it's, it's a prayer. Like it's actually dropping into a state of erotic prayer together Mm -hmm. where it's, it's no longer about just pleasure. It's actually about something that feels so much greater than us. Mm. It's just the word is like, that sounds divine. Yeah. Right. It just sounds like a divine experience. And for guys listening, wondering, okay, what's my role in that? You are providing that backdrop. You are providing that that structural space so that she can surrender and fall into you and not fall down, but fall into something that's sturdy and secure and trustworthy. And it's a, it may be a different role than surrender. And at this point, I don't believe it as dominance. It's just holding yeah. and the, the exquisiteness of getting to hold while someone goes through that experience while you are actually connected to them is fucking divine. And I would love for people to just get the tiniest taste of that. And you're right. I think we'd change the environment. We'd like clean the fucking ocean if people could feel that. Yeah. I believe that, and this is interesting. I've never brought this to you like this. So it'll be interesting to see if you completely disagree. Um, but I believe that the key for men is surrender also because you have to surrender performance. Mm-hmm. You have to surrender being good. You have to surrender that it's supposed to look a certain way. So yeah. while your surrender might not look the same way as a woman's mm-hmm. to actually hold the kind of space that you're holding requires a surrender into something that you don't know and do, because what's so. going to be happening in front of you is going to be something that you, you don't know either. Um, and so I think it's surrender. I do not disagree with you at all. I, we surrender to whatever is happening moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. And we have to throw away our agenda. Right. We have to throw away the path that we thought this was going to go. And so literally surrender to whatever happens moment to moment because it changes often so quickly. And if you're trying to mentally game what's happening with a fully expressed sexual female, good fucking luck. It's like trying to game the ocean. Uh, So I agree with you. It is, it is a very nuanced surrender. Yeah. It's also surrendering to whatever she's going through. As in we can switch masculine, feminine, male, female, I don't give a fuck. But for the point of this conversation, surrendering to whatever the feminine is doing that is, you know, I've had people ask like, well, what's in it for the guy? If we're just sitting here holding the space, like what's in it for us? It's like one, the absolute divinity of the space. And two, the ride that you're going to get to go on holding the space for someone who is going on such a wild, crazy ride herself. Like you get to be part orchestrator and part audience of the greatest show on earth. And here's the secret guys. A well-fucked woman is very generous. (laughs) Can I put that on a t-shirt or something? (laughs) 
true. And so, we have our, our Jamie Thompson. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's going to come back around. Just don't make it about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I love you to death. Oh, it fuck, just I'm naturally, that's composed. naturally how it is when, when the well is full. It's like, it's the job of both people in the relationship to mm-hmm. fill the feminine's well. Like, mm-hmm. let's have the feminine well be full because mm-hmm. everybody is happy when that happens. Right. right. It's just like, it's the job of everyone in the relationship to, to support the masculine in having a backbone and the ability to hold, mm-hmm. right? It's like, that's going to support everybody. So, so if we work on this as like a team, instead of this mm-hmm. idea that there's this battle of the sexes, rather it's like, right. no, like fill her up because when she's really full, it's, it's great for everybody. She overflows. Yeah. All over you. All over <laughs> you. The universe squirt all over you. Got okay, it. now I'm going to quote you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We could go on. We're just going to like, fuck, it's hot in here. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me shift gears quickly and to one of our favorite topics. And I would love for you to ex- just chat about the primal. I have some thoughts, but I would love for what is Why is the primal missing? What is it about permission, especially for women? I think guys like, yeah, I'm the fucking dude. I'm the caveman. Like, rah, 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 rah. but where is it missing from the feminine? I think this is a, a like whoop, switch conversation. Would you mind chatting about that? Yeah. So, so here's the thing. If, if you, if you ask a woman, like, do you want to be ravished in a way that you are fully held in connection and, and have the experience of being fully taken? Most are going to be like, uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> but yet when you say primal, a lot of people have this idea that that means the porn mm. that you were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. like the, the stuff that it's um, degraded into, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not what it started out as, but like the current really disconnected, violent yeah. porn. Yeah. Um, people have an idea that like, that's what primal sex is. Right. And I, so I think there's a confusion around it and mm. the true primal is missing because people today are often not embodied. We're so in our heads, we're on devices, we're walking, you know, we're mm. walking around looking down at phones instead of like connecting with people. Mm-hmm. And it, in, and the same thing in, in our, um, in, in our home life and in our sex life, it's like the, the, the days when we were just in in the dirt more and mm. and connected to our to our bodies are 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 virtually gone unless you create it for yourself right and so i think the primal is so important and so many men, women want it because they have this desire to feel their their full sexual power yeah and and to be able to um, you know, fully r- be ravished and also r- to, to, to have their, just to claim their, their pleasure and their power in their body. Mm. And our, our body is the primal. Our body is it, it, the energy that's in our body is the divine, mm-hmm. but our body itself is the primal. And so there's a, there's, there's an animal inside that mm-hmm. inside of all of us that, that wants to be met in certain ways. And there's a lot of value inside of that animal. I actually call it primal intelligence Mm. where it's like, there's the intellect of the mind and then there's the, the primal intelligence of the body. And when you can really unlock Mm. that, you feel safe. You trust yourself more. People trust you more. Mm -hmm. Um, You're able to navigate it. You know, it's like, um, uh, navigate the 3d world so so like money and 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 sex and like the having mastery over your body all of that comes from having a connection to your to your primal intelligence and being in your body Mm -hmm. and a lot of women really long to to just unleash you know unleash the the sex kitten from the cultural cage and it's like it's it's stuck she's like stuck in there she's in this cage and she wants to get out and, and I see it and it's so empowering for women when they can really claim like, yeah, I like sex yeah. and this is exactly the kind of sex that I like <clears throat> and I love my body and I feel mm-hmm. good in it. Mm-hmm. 
if you could give women permission to do that in a in, in any way, how would you go about doing that? And do you think it's women that need to give women permission that? Is it men that need to hold a different kind of space for women to do that? How do we do that? Let's let's figure this out on this call. Yeah. How do we do this right here? So here's the here's the two issues: mistrust and judgment. So oh. mistrust of what does it mean if oh, I get chills because yeah, what, what does it mean good. if I embody that energy? Will I be misunderstood? Mm. You know, so it's like a mistrust of a woman's own sexuality. So yes, that is that is absolutely the job of both men and women. Is mm. like how can we all create a space of of trust where you can be a fully embodied sexual woman, and that doesn't mean that you're gonna get raped. Right. I mean, so there's, this is a, there's a, there's a thing here with this of like, or mistrust of self. You know, I, I know for myself, it, I made some bad decisions in my life, mm -hmm. you know, like there has been some bad decisions where I didn't really trust. So I lost trust in, in some of my choices mm -hmm. and that had me pull back my, my sexuality for a while. And maybe that was good. Maybe I needed to reorient so that I lived in a body that I trust trusted. And I knew that I made choices that I trusted. This is a big thing for women in opening up. Yeah. It's being able to trust ourselves and the people that we're with. And then the other, the other thing that's in the way is, is what you said that I think is, um, mostly the job of, of women in tribe together. And that's judgment. Hmm. There is there. It's really easy to judge a sexually embodied woman. Wow. Say more about that, please. Um, I, there's, it's like the judgment of, um, oh, she's, you know, she's, she's easy or she's a mm -hmm. slut or, mm -hmm. you know, this idea of a woman that lives in her pleasure and is comfortable in her body is threatening to other women. So mm -hmm. rather than like take a page from the book, women can get into judgment of each other. Mm-hmm about this. And mm -hmm. if you're judging another <clears throat> woman's sexuality, there is, there is something, I mean, I'm just going to say this, it's, it's say interesting, it. but there's something inside of you that you're not claiming. Truly. You know, like I, I might not be, make the same choices as every woman sexually, mm -hmm. but I don't judge. I don't judge them. Mm -hmm. Judgment comes from something inside that we are not wanting to look at. Yeah. It comes from shame. Right. Usually it comes from a place of shame. Exactly. So for the, for the women, it's about trust and a lack of judgment or releasing judgment. Can you speak before I do to the primal in men and what permission do we need to give men or do we need to pull permission back from men? How do we need to, adjust the male mindset and experience so that what they're coming to the primal with is different than what we're seeing right now, which is just out of control primality. Like I have feeling, I grab, I, I need, I do. How do we into, introduce a higher level and a higher quality of primality into sexuality through men? Heart cock connection. Bring it through your heart. Fascinating, isn't it? You know, like actually, and that's where it's like, and that, see, and this is where I think the, the, the gap and the confusion happen is men, men are like, well, that men, I could see men saying that's not primal. And hmm. it, you know, cause there's an idea that primal means void of heart. And I don't think it does. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, I think that there's an invitation for, you know, for women to invite men to bring it through their heart. Like, yes, baby, bring me all of that. And I want to feel your heart too. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like not shutting them down, but mm. like, I want to feel you here too. Mm -hmm. And then for men, you know that you will be received um, much more deeply and it will actually be more fulfilling for both of you in the long term mm -hmm. if, if you can find the heart. Mm, beautiful. I was on a phone this morning with a client, a man explaining what I think of the difference between aggression and fierceness and that aggression is a bypass of the heart. When I'm aggressive, I want to fucking hurt people. Fe ferocity is this is going to have intensity. It's going to have a primal edge to it. 
and the, my heart is so present that the safety and trust is there 110%. And I think you nailed it that what is missing in everything that we, so much of what we see in the uh, collective male challenge is that we're not bringing our hearts into any of the activities, whether it is the planet, whether it is communication or whether it is sexuality. Um, and why that is, I haven't figured out uh, from looking at history or looking at just movements, but it's, it's so necessary. Thank you for saying that. For guys listening, take a moment and let that integrate through. Uh, I, I was just real quick in a workshop with Robert Masters and a bunch of guys, and we had to just say the word no to a partner. Like we were partnered up with men on men. He's like, say the word no, say it aggressively and see what happens to your partner and then say it for fiercely through your heart. And when we heard the word no, and there was no heart, like I might, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I was like, I'll fucking kill you. Like, let's do this. Let's, let's tussle. And then when they said it in a way that had their hearts present, the whole, you could like the whole room just went woof and everybody got quiet and went, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Yeah. It's primality. I think it's such a, such a missing, um, such a missing element. It one, one more piece on this, mm -hmm. um, is a, like asking a question for, for men with this as well as like, Am I doing this for her or against her? There, there's, a, there's a difference between a fierceness that is for, mm. that is like for her pleasure mm -hmm. and for your pleasure ver than, than like a, an aggression that is against. Right. You know, like what am I actually fighting for? Ooh. Or am I just fighting against? Like are we just – against each other or is this actually like for something wow i just got chills good fucking work oh <sighs> okay jamie i want to be respectful of your time and everybody's time but i think that you know what i read uh today on social media is that you're about to give birth to a brand new spanking baby something like jim is having a baby <laughs> <laughs> I am having an <laughs> orgasmic birth right now. <laughs> of course. And I've decided that I am not launching the Awakening Your Erotic Muse course, but rather oh. I'm releasing it because the masculine launches, right? Mm. The feminine releases. Ah. So, and it really has been a feminine release. So, this course um, that I told you that I would share here first mm -hmm. it's called awakening your erotic muse Ooh, and me. it's about it's a journey inside to unlock and unleash your true turn on and pleasure and learn how to embody it and embody your full sexual power both on your own with or without a partner and in relationship and it's a six-week course um, I go through the, the, the four elements and um, it's becoming a muse for yourself ultimately mm -hmm. where the baseline, I, I like to say that the baseline in life can be turn on mm -hmm. and, and, and no matter what is actually happening in life, challenging things can happen. But when you understand how the wiring of pleasure works, you can actually turn challenging situations and emotional experiences even heartbreak into greater orgasm. So I call it the greater orgasm. I have a lot of different <laughs> little, little things um, that, that are, in this, are in this course. And I'm so, I am so excited to go through this journey. There's, there's two options and I'm going to give your people a $300 discount. Damn. That's an early bird discount that will only be around for two days. Okay. Um, and so you can post that in here, Awakening Your Erotic Muse. The discount is Early Muse. Um, and for people who are going to listen to that tonight. Yes. So the website so is? The site is Awakening Your Erotic Muse. Okay. Um, a A W A K E N I N G Y O U R E R O T I C M U S E. Mm -hmm. And the discount is all caps. Early Muse, E A R L Y M U S E. Beautiful. And it's three hundred dollars off. It's a six six week course. Check out the check out the the website. 
And um, is this I, there's coaching, Amy, or, or, uh, coaching, Jamie? Yeah, so there's two options. Know? One option, you can just do it on your own. If you want to awaken on your own, go ahead. You can do that. <laughs> you can go through the modules on your own. The second option is it's going to be awakening in a community of women that are supportive. So it's really wow. changing this paradigm of women mm. judging each other mm. and, and making it um, a, a support community where we are all in this together. And so there will be a Zoom call each of the six weeks in that. And then there's also an online curated community of other women who are also awakening their erotic muse. So if you want to awaken with support, then that is another option as well. Okay. So both those options are on the site. And Jamie, just so I'm clear, this is for women only. This is for women only. Okay. You and I are going to make one for men next. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going to release the fuck out of it. Yeah. You can launch it. <laughs> <Our launch. laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Everybody get that down. Awakening your erotic muse. And I had this challenge. So remember it's M-U-S-E, not M-U-Z-E. Um, for those of you who are, you know, phonetically gifted. Uh, awesome. I'm so proud of you. I remember months ago when this idea was like popping around in your head. And you're like, I'm going to do this thing. It's called the Awakening. You're like, I don't know. So good for you. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, I really, I used the, I used the, the, like I created this course. I mean, notice I'm not drained right now. Mm -hmm. I just like had an orgasmic birth because I did this <laughs> from the feminine. I actually mm -hmm. created something and I was like, I'm going to stay turned on in this experience and not right. just like hustle my way through it in a masculine way. I got mm -hmm. to actually put everything um, that's in the course to use. And so it's really an opportunity to become more creative, inspired women that are up to something in life and how to do that from a feminine place, how right. to have the radiance that will actually carry you through as fuel mm. instead of having to do this masculine hustle kind of thing. Beautiful. I see faces that I know on this call who, I don't know, let's just throw it out there, may benefit from creating the way they're creating the way you're creating. Uh, cause they're brilliant creators, but, and oftentimes find themselves exhausted, which I think the general female collective is exhausted. This is I, like, as we, we don't need to be exhausted women. We don't need to, we don't need to be there, that there's, there's actually an, a well that we have inside that is so much greater than, than the masculine has. But we in this masculine society are not taught how to actually turn on the well, to turn on mm -hmm. the radiance. And it's, it comes from being connected to our pleasure and our feminine cycle and our pussy and all the things that nobody wants to talk about. So keep we going. talk about it there. Keep, keep going. Keep going. You're, this, is where, this is like prime Jamie. Like someone just give you a shot of espresso. Go, 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 go. Although there's like a competitive part of me that's like, wait a minute, you have more of something than I do? Wait a minute, what's going on here? We're going to have to talk after the call. No, but remember, <laughs> remember when, the, when, the, when the feminine is full, it's also yours. It overflows mm -hmm. and it also gets to be yours. I'm, you're so fucking good at this. Like, <laughs> So everybody wins. <laughs> everybody wins. Let's just get more overflowing feminine. Yes. In the world. In the world. Happier birds, cleaner oceans, you know, no more need for birds of North America. Yes. People are talking, people are having coffee, people yes. are connecting, people are communicating, people are having orgasms, people are fucking empowered. People are fucking empowered. Jamie Thompson, you are one of the most unique humans I've ever met. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much, as always, for and coming on you. here. Thank and giving you. so freely um, to everybody and all of the audiences. Uh, I've got you quoted up and down in my book. And I said, quoted up and down in my life. You guys, besides this course, Jamie, how can people find you? Oh, um, so my website is jamieelizabeththompson.com. J-A-M-I-E-E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N.com. And um, my Facebook is actually a great place to find me. I do a lot of live videos and post content. And so that's just facebook.com slash Miss Jamie Elizabeth. And my Instagram is back on. I'm out of jail. I'm out of jail. I'm on, I'm on bail. Um, and it's, it's holistic okay. sex coach. You guys get that holistic sex coach. Awesome. 
And for more information on Man Uncivilized, The Uncivilized Nation, uh, soon to be released my book, go to www.manuncivilized.com or at Traver Bohm. And since uh, I would love it if, if everybody on this call went and gave me and Jamie a review, that would be a 500% increase in reviews on iTunes. So please go do that. This thing is growing. It's a little budding idea I have. And it's people like Jamie. Thank you again for coming on sharing so, so gratefully. And of course, just for being a fucking rock star and for, un, from, for fearlessly just putting, out, putting all this out to the world. You are truly, truly um, helping people, both on both sides of the coin. So thank you. I love you. Mwah. You guys, go be uncivilized. Have a great rest of your evening.